welcome, 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 welcome. Jonah, I gotta give you a shout out. We love seeing Jonah here, bless you. And how many are excited to be in the house of the Lord? Yes. Amen, how many are ready to hear the word of the Lord this morning? Yes. How many are just like, Lord, I need a fresh word from God? Yes. Amen, how many believe God's able to do that to you, right? He's able to minister to you as if you're the only person in this room. And what I want you to do this morning is I want you to activate your faith together with mine. And we're going to believe in the Holy Spirit. We're going to trust the Holy Spirit. He's going to give me utterance to proclaim the word, but also he's going to help you. You know, the Holy Spirit's the teacher. He leads and guides us into all truth. And so what we want to do this morning is just be open to the Holy Spirit, right? And the cool thing about it is when we're open to the Holy Spirit, it just opens not only his teaching, his revealing, but also that the Spirit of God will confirm the word. He works together with us. How many are glad the Holy Ghost is here today? Amen. So, Father, we just thank you together collectively as a group of believers, those that are here, those that are watching, Father. We are believing this morning that you will give me the ability to communicate your word in a way that's the most effective, Lord Father. And, Father, we also thank you for ears to hear, eyes to see, a heart to understand, a spirit of wisdom and revelation, Father. We believe this morning that we will know the hope of our calling, Father. And, Father, we just thank you, Father, for this time of fellowship, of kononia, as we're here at your table, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord, in advance that awesome things will happen and transpire today. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said? Amen. Amen. Everybody say, don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. All right, let's go to Hebrews, the 11th chapter, verse number one. And uh, we're going to communicate a little bit thought about hope this morning. Because it, hope is an important part of our receiving from the Lord. You know, as a believer, you know, as a faith teacher, you know, I teach a lot, you know. Uh, uh, fight the good fight of faith, you know. The Bible says in the book of Timothy, lay hold to eternal life. Uh, you know, and, and, you know, we, we kind of, a lot of times us faith people, we look at hope and we go, oh, that's just a sub thing, you know. It's not really a big deal. But as we're going to see from the word, hope is a very big deal. Yes. The Bible says in the book of Corinthians, said, now these things abide, right? Faith, hope, and charity. Hope is very, very very important. And as we're going to see, if you and I lose our hope, there's nothing for your faith to lay hold to. So the enemy works really hard to take away our hope. All right. So we're believing this morning. Right. So it says this. Now, faith is is the substance of things. What hope for the evidence of things not seen. In other words, if you don't have any hope, there's nothing for your faith to give substance to it. Faith is the now. As we're going to see here, hope is, as we're going to see here, slide number two, hope is an expectation that something's going to happen in the future. Hope, there's the Greek word, it means joyful, favorable, and confident expectation. A strong belief that something will happen or be the case in the future. So when you have hope, hope is that you believe something that your future is going to change. Right? If you're poor, you know, before you can have faith, you have to have a vision that God wants to prosper you, God wants to help you, and you get a hope inside of you that things could start to change in your life. Your future can be different. Faith takes a hold of that hope and brings substance to it. It's like the Bible says this in the book of uh, Mark, the 11th chapter, verse 24. It says, whatsoever things you desire, desire, hope, when you pray, Believe that you receive it. Faith believes that you have your hope now, even though you don't have it, right? But your hope that we're talking about here is something that's going to change in the future. It's the manifestation of God's promise. Faith takes it now, but if, unless you have a hope, there's nothing for your faith to lay hold to, right? It's you believe things can change, right? You think you're, you believe your body can get better. Before people can have faith to, to accept, accept the healing of God, they have to believe that God wants to do something good for them. Yes. So it says hope. He says faith gives substance to things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Everybody say hope. hope. And so the enemy works hard, not only to get you out of faith, but to get you out of hope. Right. To get to a place where you get, he wants us to think that nothing can change. What's the use? We've been here for 40 years. <laughs> We've been in the wilderness, marching around. Nothing can change. And what he, he tries to do, because he's working on getting your faith, getting you out of faith, but he's trying to get you and I out of hope. Yes. All right? Notice what it says in Proverbs, the 13th chapter, verse number 12. Hope is an important part, as we're going to see 
here. If you start losing your hope or get discouraged, it'll affect you. The word says here in Proverbs 13, verse number 12, it says, hope, hope deferred. What does it do? It makes the heart, what does it do to your heart? Sick. Sick. But it says, but when the desire, there's that word, comes, what's the opposite of hope? Desire, right? It's the same thought. When the desire comes, it's a tree of life. So he says here, when hope is deferred, deferred, he says, your heart gets sick. Notice these words here. I want you to see it. Slide number three for the word deferred. How many love the word of the Lord? Yes. How many believe we're going to be changed this morning? Yes. The word deferred means this. He said, when hope, your expectation, your future seems to be drawn out. It's being prolonged. It's taking forever. It's dragging. It's being postponed. It's being extended. Has anybody ever felt there uh, th this condition besides me? Right? You're believing God that something's going to change in your future. You're in faith. But it's like, man, it's drawing out. It's dragging. It's being postponed. postponed. It's being extended. And so what happens when we're in this state, when we're waiting for the manifestation of our faith and our hope, right? We can get discouraged. Notice what it says. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Notice what the word sick is. I want you to see it. The word sick is slide number five. How many love the word of the Lord? Amen. The word sick means to be rubbed or worn. How many have ever been there besides me? Yeah. To be or become weak, this is what can happen when you start to lose your hope. You become weak, you become wounded, you know, you're, you're worn out, you don't want to get out of bed. He says it makes the heart sick. Notice the word for heart, slide number four. How many are excited for the word? We're students of the word, right? Amen. Amen. I got nothing to bring you but the word, and that's more than enough, right? So we got to stir our hearts and be excited for the word. He said, hope deferred, hope that's drawn out, delayed, postponed, or extended, makes the heart worn, rubbed, you know, just worn out, weak, makes the heart, there's the Hebrew word, it means your, your heart is your soul, your appetites, your seat of emotions. Can, can hope deferred affect your emotions? Can hope deferred affect your passions? People lose their passions. Can hope deferred affect your courage? Your inclination, your resolution, your determination, your will. Can hope put off, make you become like, ah, who cares? Yes. Nothing's going to change. But notice, go back to the scripture, my dear friend. How many love the word? Amen. And we're believing by the power of the Holy Spirit and by the power of the word, God's going to regenerate our hope. Yes. Because once you lose hope, you can talk about faith all you want. <laughs> you, you, it's all done. Mm -hmm. Right? Hope is a expectation, right? It is a, it is a joyful, favorable expectation. When you lose that joy and that confidence that God's going to move on your future, it's going to be sad. Everybody say, God is good. He said, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when the desire comes, when the desire, everybody say desire. Everybody say desire. What is, it comes. Notice the word for desire, slide number six. He said, when the desire comes, it's a tree of life. So the word desire means what you're wishing for, what you're longing for. See, that's hope. But see, faith gives substance to things hoped for. You just can't live in hope. You got to say, I see the future. It's beautiful. It's bright. And by faith, you take it and say, by, I believe I receive it now, even though you don't see nothing changing, but you know that your faith is going to make your hope. Right? He said, when the desire comes, that wish. How many got some wishes in this room? Some desires in this room. Some longings in this room. Right? Good, healthy ones. Right? Heart, delights. Right? He said, when your desire comes, it is a tree of life. It is life to you. It's flowing. It's fresh. It's a revival. It's a renewal. How many are believing for that in Jesus' name? Go back to the scripture. I want you to see it. How many love the word of the Lord? Amen. He said, hope deferred. Look at that in the message Bible. I want you to see it. He says this. It's in the message it says, it says, unrelenting disappointment. Has anybody been there besides me? Hey, yeah, you know, we could be real with each other this morning, right? Uh, denial is not a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> right? Sometimes when you're standing before the Lord, you can't be like those congressmen or people that get there. Uh, I choose to waive my, exercise my Fifth Amendment here or whatever it is, uh, uh, unless I incriminate myself. As soon as they say that, you know 
there's something incriminating about you. I don't want to talk. Uh, I've been advised by my counsel not to talk here because I might say something that might put me behind bars. Well, how many know when you're standing before the Lord, we should just be open to the Lord, right? Yes. And so just denying, well, I've never been unrelentingly disappointed. I, I think you've not lived in the world that I live in because it, it's a reality. This devil tries to work on it, doesn't he? He said, unrelenting disappointment leaves your heart sick. But a, when a sudden good word or good break, what can it do? Turn it around. Everybody say, turn it around. So we're seeing here, number one, hope is an important part of our faith, right? We're seeing also that when hope can, can, can just drag on, right? right? If, if, if you don't, you, if you can get discouraged, you can get sad, you can uh, be worn. But notice here, I want you to see, and we talked about this before, and we won't camper too long, but sometimes you can just give up hope. You can just get to a place where you just kind of like, it's never going to change, this is terrible. And we're going to see how we can get out of that condition. And we're going to start navigating in a real positive. But you need to see this. Let's go to 1 Samuel, the first chapter. How many love the word of the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. Some people just get to a place where they just say, Pastor, it's over. It's done, you know. There's no hope. There's no hope. And this is where this a woman, her name is Hannah, was. And we talked about it, but some haven't heard it. But I just want you to hear it. We'll go very quickly. And we're going to get other things. But I want you to hear this is the condition of a person who totally lost hope in God's word. Okay, totally lost hope in the near future. Look at 1 Samuel, the first chapter, verse number one. And we'll just read it real quick. He says, there was a certain man, and you can name that self, you can call him what you want. I'm, call, I'm going to call him Ramah, you know, or, um, or Zophin. I kind of like to shorten the names here. Or Ephraim, and his name was Elika and I, and he was the son of David. Oh, verse number two, we should have just skipped that one. <laughs> he had two wives, and how many know that could be a problem, right? It's, it's not like double mint gum. You just want one. One is, one is enough, right? He said he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, and, and the name of the other was uh, Peniah, or Penel, you know, whatever, or Pina. We can call her what you want. Had uh, children by, but Hannah had no kids, right? She had no children. So let's go to verse number uh, two, three. And, and so this man, he went to the city yearly, right, to offer up sacrifice to the Lord of hosts in Shiloh, which is a place of peace. And the two sons of Eli, his high priest, was there. The priests of the Lord were there. Verse number four. And it says, when the time that... Uh, Elkanah Elkan, offered, he gave to Peniah, his wife, and to her, all her sons and her daughters portions. He gave portions to them. And verse number five, it says, but to Hannah, he gave a worthy portion because he, he loved Hannah. And it says, for the Lord had shut up her womb. But we're going to see it wasn't really the Lord that shut up her womb. It really wasn't the Lord. Because God's not a divided kingdom. God's actually the solution here. And so he says, well, the Lord shut up her womb. It really wasn't that. It was something that she, she was doing in and of herself that was shutting up the womb. Verse number uh, six, and it says she had her adversary, which was the other wife, Hannah, the other, the other wife that was uh, Peniah, provoked her sore for to make her fret because the Lord had shut up her womb. And so it says he provoked her. The word provoked, slide number seven. This other wife, right, she's, she's troubling her. She's provoking her, causing her to anger. He provoked her, she provoked her sore, caused her to get grief, frustration. Every year this was going on. Look at that scripture in the Message Bible. We'll just look at that one real quick. So every year, her adversary, this other wife, was giving her trouble because she was barren. But her rival wife taunted her cruelly, rubbing it in, never letting her forget that God had not given her children. Let's go to verse number seven. And this happened year, everybody say year. year. Everybody say by year. And when she, went, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her. Therefore, she wept and did not eat. She's not eating year after year. The same situation. She's not having any children. Uh, this other wife is tormenting her year after year. The problem's not changing. She loses hope. She's losing hope. She is provoked Sore year after year after year after year. The same situation. There's no fruit. Nothing is changing. Nothing is changing. She's frustrated. She's, and we're going to see it in a moment. Look at slide number, verse number eight. This happened year after year. Then said Elkanah, her husband, to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? And why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am I not better to thee than ten sons? Obviously not, right? <laughs> I mean, he was like, ain't I better than 10 kids, you know? And he, she, obviously, she wasn't eating. She's very, very sad. Look at verse number 9. 
It says here, and it says, so Hannah rose up after she had eaten at Shiloh, and after they had drunk, now she gets, she gets up, and she goes, now the high priest Eli sat upon the seat by the post of the temple. So she goes to the temple. So she's going to the temple, or the tabernacle, <clears throat> and she's going there to, uh, to talk to the Lord. Look at verse number 10. And, and she, was, she was in bitterness, bitterness of soul. Everybody say bitterness of soul. And she prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. She was in bitterness of soul. Look at the word. Look at that translation in the Amplified. I want you to see this is a condition of somebody that lost all hope. Okay, we're still talking about hope. And Hannah was in distress of soul, praying to the Lord and weeping bitterly. Look at slide number eight just to see another one. A year, this is going on year after. She's bitterness of soul. The complete Jewish Bible says this, in deep depression. She prayed to Adonai in Christ. She's depressed. There's no joy. There's no hope for the future. Why is she depressed? She believes that there's no hope. She's not having any kids. The, the New Century Version says this. Hannah was so sad. She cried and prayed. This is, go, this is no hope. This is a sign of no hope. Nothing's going to change. Same old, same old. Nothing's going to get better. That's the same lie the devil will tell you and that he'll tell me. Yes. He'll try to get you to believe. It's, this is the way it's going to be. It's never going to change. Never going to get any better. He wants you to lose your hope because once you lose your hope and once I lose my hope, there's no faith. I can't grab a hold of it. I can't get excited about my future. Right. So this is going on. She's so sad. Look at verse number, uh, look at that in the message Bible, my dear friend. The message says like this, and crushed in soul, Hannah prayed to God and cried and cried inconsolably. She's crying. Why? No hope. Nothing's going to change. It's never going to get better. Look at verse number 11, my dear friend. How many love the word? And she vowed a vow. She, she's there. Now she's, she's coming to the Lord. She vowed a vow to the Lord. She said, Lord, if you'll look up on the affliction of thy handmaiden, and remember me, and not forget thy handmaiden, but will give unto thy handmaiden a man-child that I will give him to you, Lord, all the days of his life. And there shall no razor come upon his head. She, she comes to the Lord and says, Lord, if you'll look on my affliction, my affliction, look at that word, slide number nine. How many love the word of the Lord? Amen. Are we getting? He said, will you look on my depression? Will you look on my misery? Now, I'm not saying anybody in this room has experienced it, but maybe somebody watching could be feeling... Maybe, I'm talk, maybe the Lord gave me this word for somebody else, but I believe the Lord gave me this word. Because I believe there's people that are just like, man, you don't realize how miserable I'm feeling. You don't feel, I, 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 and, and we're going to see it's because there's no hope. Depression, misery. Look at that word there. Look at, um, go, to, go, to, go to the next verse, Jeremy. Misery. She, she prays, she says, Lord, give me a child. And she's praying to the Lord. And it came to press, and she continued to pray before the Lord, that Eli looked at her mouth. She's not saying any words. Look at verse number 13. He's looking at her, and, he's, and Hannah, she's spake in her heart. She's, this is going on. She's keeping it. She's trying to conceal it so much. She's not even giving an expression to God with her mouth. She's at the, the, the tabernacle. She's just, just doing this, being quiet about it. But her, but her voice was not heard. And, and the high priest looked at her and said, I think she's drunk. She goes, I think you're drunk, basically. Look at verse 14. And he said, and Eli said to her, how long wilt thou be drunken? Put away your wine from you. This is how de emotionally touched she was. She was like, Ugh. she's not even, can't even get the words out of her mouth. And, and he's looking at her. He's like, man, you're a drunk woman. Put the bottle away. Go home. Look at verse number 15. She turns to Eli, the high priest now, which was a representative and a type of Christ. He answered, Hannah answered and said, no, my Lord, I mean, I'm a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine or nor strong drink, but, but I poured out my soul to God, to the Lord. She goes, I'm not drunk. She says, I, I'm, I got a sorrowful spirit. Look at the word, look at the word, uh, some different translations. Slide number uh, 10, my dear friend. How many love the word? We just love the word. It says here, he says, Hannah, Hannah responded, no, sir, I'm not drunk. I'm depressed. Can God handle you? Can you be, you know, I'm pour, you know, I'm pour, she's pouring out her heart to God. I'm depressed. Look at slide number 11, Jeremy. He goes, for my words have come from, a, my words have come from stored up sorrow and pain. The Good News translation says this. I've been praying like this because I'm so miserable. Look at the New Living Translation, my dear friend. 
This is no hope. This is no hope. There's totally no hope. No hope. Absolutely no hope. She goes, oh, no, sir. She replied, I'm not drunk, but I'm, I'm very sad. Why was she sad? She had no hope for her future. And I'm, I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Look at verse number 16, my dear friend. How many love the word of the Lord? Amen. She goes, count not thy handmaiden for a daughter of Belial or daughter of the devil, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. Look at the, so the, in the Message Bible. She says, don't for a minute think I'm, I'm a bad woman. It's because I'm so desperately unhappy and in such pain that I've stayed here so long. This is a sad state. This is sad. Everybody say, it's sad. It's sad. So now look at verse number 17. So Eli answered and said, now, he's, he's, now she's, she's there. She's coming to the Lord. She's crying out to the Lord. And she says, he looks at her. He doesn't know her problem. He doesn't know exactly. She didn't say, I'm sad and miserable. This woman's treating me bad. I got no kids. I got no hope of having kids. We try, we try and try and try. We can't have any kids. So Eli just looks at her and he gives her one word. He says, go in peace, go in shalom. And the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. What she, he, he gave her a word. He gave her one word. Eli, look at the word for Eli in peace here. Slide number 12. He gave her a word. That's all, that's all it takes is one word from God can give you hope. Yes. The word Eli means ascension. How many know we need some people that are going to speak positive things into our life? Yes. We need some Eli's in our life. And he said, go in peace. The word peace is the Greek Hebrew word shalom. It means, it's a great word. It means completeness, soundness. Welfare, peace, safety, happiness. It means to be made whole, complete, by adding something or subtracting something, by saying hello to something or goodbye to something. So when she heard that, he said, go in the completeness of God. Go in the completeness of Jehovah. He, she respected him. She respected the high priest. She received that word of the Lord. She received the word shalom. And she said, yes, I am broken. I am not whole. I need to be made complete. I need something added to me. I'm going to go in God's shalom. Yes. Yes. Isn't that good? Yes. That's good. Sometimes we want to have 16 scriptures 45, and it's great. Trust me, fortify your faith. I'm a full, firm believer of that. But how many know one word, a shalom word from God? That's all you need. You just need to know God will add to my life and God will subtract from my life. He knows what I need. Yes. He said, go in shalom. Go in completeness. Now look at verse number 18. She heard that. And she, and Eli said, go. And she said, wait a minute. Why don't you lay hands on me? Why don't you get a prophetic word for me? Why don't you say something more to me? I need a dream. I need a vision. I need more. What gave her hope for the future was one word. That God, the God of Shalom, Jehovah Shalom, yes. he's going to add to me whatever I need. And I need a child that's going to complete me. It's going to happen in my future. Yes. She said, let thy her find grace. And so the woman, what did she do? She went her way. What did she do? She ate. she ate. Now she's no more sad. And no more sad. She simply believed the word of God and said, hey, all that misery, all that depression, all that uh, affliction and frustration and anxiety that she was feeling year after year, in one moment, a word from God, a shalom word, she put a smile on her face. She was no more sad. What gave her that? The word gave her, as we're going to see, the word gave her hope. Yes. Yes. Are you hearing me, church family? Yes. She said, so the woman went her way. Notice what that word way is. I want you to see it. Slide number uh, 13. She, was, she went her way. She, she's, she went her way. She, she started moving again. She started living again. 
This is what the devil wants you and I to do. He wants us to camp at those places of depression, to camp at those sad things, to live there for the rest of your life. But I say to you this morning, there's a God in heaven, Jehovah Shalom. He's saying to you, arise, go in completeness. Go your way, start living again. Shake off that snake, shake off that dust. It's time to live. Because there's somebody great in your future. It's the Omega. It's God Almighty. He said, go your way. Look at, look at that scripture in the New Living Translation. Slide number, uh, 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 slide, no, I'm sorry, Jeremy, verse 18. He said, okay. She goes, what? She got that one word. She goes, oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> Do you see honor involved here? Yes. She respected the ministry of the, the high priest. Yep. Somebody, and, and even though this guy was a this guy was a wasn't a good high priest. He was a he was a he wasn't he wasn't a good family manager. His kids were fornicating in the temple. God sent a prophet to him and said, "Hey, you're you're," and they were stealing God's offering. They weren't honoring God. God said, "Hey, hey, it's going to be bad for you." Which, I mean, she didn't know all that, obviously, I don't think. <laughs> but the point, she honored that. There's something about honor. We live in a culture and a society, we don't honor nobody. Ministers, we're just normal. Uh, Pastor Michael's just a normal guy. He's just, he's, just, he's just a dude. Well, I could be a dude to you, but guess what? You're not going to get what you're supposed to get if you look at me as a dude. He's just a buddy. Well, I could be your buddy. But I don't, you don't need a buddy. Trust me. You need a pastor. You need a, a, a man of God to be able to speak into your life. Yes. Right? And so she honored that. She said, thank you, sir, she exclaimed. Then she went back. And what did she start to do? For years, she wasn't eating. Guess what? She started acting like Pastor Michael. She began to eat again. <laughs> you know when you're sick, you know? You know, a few months ago, when I, whatever, I was like, I lost like six, seven pounds, you know. I'm like, this is terrible because I wasn't eating as much. Trust me, all those pounds that I lost, kumbaya, my Lord, kumbaya. <laughs> now I'm back to the old fight again. and trying to get down, get down, come on, come on, come on get off, get off me. Amen. <laughs> Amen, <bro. laughs> Notice that she went her way. She got started to eat. And guess what another thing she started to do? See, when you got hope, what did she have? Nothing happened. She didn't have a, she didn't have a relationship with her husband at this time. There's nothing, nothing. There was nothing. She, her belly wasn't swelling. She wasn't pregnant. What did she do? She just believed God's word, the hope that came from that word. And she put a smile on her face, and she started to be no more sad. Why was she no more sad? Because she had hope for her future. <laughs> Are you hearing me? No more sad. Can we do the same thing? Absolutely. You can just hear it. You know, the devil's been telling you, oh, your future, it's so sad. You'll never be happy. You'll never, you'll never experience true love. You'll never have a nice car. You'll never, you never, never. No, you can just believe in the shalom of God that whatever I need yes. to make me whole and complete, yes. God will either subtract some things, and I'm going to know sometimes subtractions are good things. Yes. You know, the, the word shalom means hello and goodbye. How many know some goodbyes are good things? Like the Beatles said, you say hello, I say goodbye. I take both of them, glory to God. That's why I tell my kids, you know, man, if, if I get a closed door, so if, you know, if I was supposed to buy a car and somebody got it out from underneath me, I'd go out to dinner and celebrate just as if I got the car. I'm serious because I believe in the shalom of God. God's got something good for me in my future. That's better. That's better. Oh, they don't love me. They just don't care for me. They just rejected me. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> they broke my heart. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Why are you so happy? There's a better thing in my future. <laughs> don't live a country life like a country song. My dog died. My, you know, you know. Just play those country songs backwards. You'll have your wife back. You, you won't be an alcoholic. <laughs> you hear me? <laughs> Just play them backwards, you know. It's not a fine time to leave me, Lucille. You know, we're, we're, we're living on, right? I don't know the country music. I know when I was a kid, it was just, it was, I, I can remember some of those songs were so sad, you know. I was like, man, these are sad songs. 
She went back. She began to eat again. She was no longer sad. Verse number, um, verse number uh, 19. And, they, and they, they, notice this. They, she started to go to church again. They rose up in the morning and they worshiped before the Lord. And she came to the house and it says, now her husband knew her. This word knew her. How many children in this room? I, I, uh, besides me. How many kids in this room besides me? <laughs> <laughs> this word knew means, uh, it doesn't mean that he knew her. It talks about means having a husband and wife relationship. Only exclusively for husband and wives. Y'all hear me out there? Yeah. Exclusive. <laughs> Only husbands and wives can knew he like, like this, right? Sometimes I'll rate my wife and I'll say, honey, I'm thinking, to you, I'm thinking about you in a biblical way. She knows exactly what I'm saying to her. <laughs> you guys, can you handle that? Can you handle that truth? All right. But if you're not married, I don't care if you're, you're engaged or anything, you, you could be pure. <laughs> I could preach that all day. It seems like it's one of my pet things in the Lord. But anyway, <laughs> he knew her. But how, isn't it interesting? She couldn't have any kids. But she was so sad and miserable. She probably wasn't even doing anything to maybe help it along, you know. Her and her husband weren't knowing each other. Perhaps. Perhaps. Uh -huh. But maybe they were. But, but, but it's interesting, you know. Happy, she's joyful. Isn't there something about being joyful? Yes. We, we draw from the wells of salvation with joy. When you're happy, you become more fruitful in the kingdom. Uh, anyways, that's a whole other thought. He goes, and he, he knew her, and the Lord remembered her. Look at that scripture in the New, New Living Translation. How many love the word? Yeah. Well, we're going to be talking about hope. I think we're going to be talking about hope next week. I got, I got too much to waste here. I don't want to leave it. We're going to have to cater it next week to you. The entire family got up early the next morning. They all went to church. Yes. And they went to worship. <laughs> I'm so sad. I'm so miserable. I can't even go to church. You should be going to church. That's right. That's right. <laughs> they went to church. The entire family. You know, she hooked up. Maybe she had some attitude toward that other lady. Now, there's peace there. Yeah. Yeah. Are you guys hearing this? All right, let me just, I, I really can't, um, I got so much to share with you. Whew. I got more time? Oh, man, we got more time. My wife says I got more time. All right, 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 let's go to, <laughs> I got so much, so much here. I feel like, um, let's go to uh, Psalms 4211. Everybody say, hope in the word. Hope in the, word. the word gives me hope. The word gives us hope. One word, that's all she needed. Some of you are getting some hope today. You're, you're seeing this. You're going, hey, I'm getting them. Hey. And this, you know, the Lord spoke to me. And it was this. Sometimes, 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 you know, we have an idea of what we think our future should be. And when we think, well, I didn't get that car, or I didn't get that person, or I didn't do this, or this didn't happen in my life, sometimes we, somehow we blame God. Is it possible that maybe we just missed it? Is it possible that we maybe yep. thought we heard God? But we can hope in God's word right? Yes. And be confident that whatever God says in his word, however he wants to bring it about to us, we know it will happen. However he wants to bring the completeness or add things to me or subtract things from me, I'm okay with it. Yep. I don't want to try to make God do something I think is what I think it should be. I'm okay with God doing what he thinks he should be because I know it's ultimate happiness. Amen? Yes. So I hope in the word, right? Yes. Notice what the psalmist said. This is, I believe it's David. He, he's, he's talking to himself. <laughs> he said, why have you ever talked to yourself like this? Why are you cast down, O oh my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope thou in God. See, what's, what's the answer to being cast down? What's the answer to being disquieted within you? And I'll show you those words. It's hoping in God. Yes. Desiree, even though I can't see you, thank you. <laughs> Isn't it great? You can hear about, her and Bear. I, know, I was, I was going to feel bad because they're like, they're, they're so beautiful when they're here. They're so engaged, you know. Hey, Amen. And Desiree. But you guys are still blowing it off in the back even louder. So it bless your heart. <laughs> stereo, right? It's stereo. You're right. <laughs> he said, John, that's a good one. He said, for I shall, he goes, he goes, hope in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance, countenance and my God. And my God. How many like that? How many know he's your God too? All right, let's look at these words real quick. He said, why are you cast down? He's talking to his soul. He's talking to his emotions. He's talking to his inner self. 
He's talking to his feelings. He's talking to his passions. He's like, why are you cast down? Look at slide number 24. Can't say I'm not used to you being there either. <laughs> Usually Cassie's back there. And Jonah, so good to have Jonah. Isn't it great having Jonah here? I know this isn't good for the live audience, but it's great. We're all excited about it. <laughs> I like new views here. I got new views here. He said, why are you cast down? He's talking about his soul. He says, and the word cast down means to be bowed down. Look at this next word, to be reduced, be weakened, be humbled. The pictograph of this word or how the word is described means to go down or sink down. It's going down into a pit. When you, when you start to get cast down, when you start to just, you're, 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 you're losing your hope. What, what the enemy's trying to do, he wants to get you and I, it's like capturing us in a pit, sinking us into a pit. But it's, he's saying, my soul, he says, soul, why are you reduced? Why are you so weak? Why are you so weak? Have you ever, ever been there? Sometimes you just feel like, what's the use? I, I got no energy. I feel like I'm bleh. I feel like, ah. Oh. He says, why? He says, why are you so cast down? Oh, my soul. Go, go back to the scripture. And he, says, and he says, why are you, and why are you disquieted within me? Notice this word disquieted. I want you to see it, my dear friend. It's, it's slide number 25. He says, not only was he being reduced, he's being reduced, he's being uh, weakened. He said, why are you disquieted within me? It means, it means why are you there's making a loud noise? Uh, there's commotion, there's turmoil, there's confusion, there's disorder. I'm moved, I'm, I'm in being trouble. So what's going on inside of you? Why are you so, have you ever been there besides me where you just feel like all these thoughts just keep coming and rolling and it's, it's, it's sometimes it's louder than God. It's louder than the word. It's, it's louder than your vision. It's louder than your hope. Yeah. Yeah. Is it okay this morning? Are we being real with each other? Yeah, he said, he said, why are you so loud? You ever been around somebody that's going through a disquiet heart? I have. As soon as you get near him, it's just, it's like, how you doing? You ever been there? You know, how, how you doing today? Uh, you're expecting, no, not too bad, praise the Lord. Uh -huh. like, you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. It happens to me quite a bit. Part of being a pastor. It happens to my wife all the time. She'll be around somebody, how you doing today? How you doing, sweetie? It's okay. Because okay. trust me, I, I've done it on few people. <laughs> and Andy, I've talked to him. I've, I've shared things. <laughs> Why are you so much out of there? It's called being human yes. and growing. You don't want to stay there, right? See, I like the psalmist here. He says, he says, why are you cast down? Why are you reduced? Why are you beaten up? Why are you just, you got no oomph? It's like that song, you know, remember that song? Walk like a man, talk like a man, right? It's, it's, it's Christian. <laughs> As Christians, we got to, you know, there's, when you're walking and you're, and you're blessing, you're, I'm walking strong, I, and even though you're like, you're, you're speaking to this mountain, you're, you're speaking to the storm, you know, but you, you got an inner strength about you. You just, you know, there's a, there's a swag. There's a, there's some, go, there's some mojo inside of you. You know, when you're walking in faith, there's, there's something inside. You know what I'm talking about, church family? You know what I'm talking about? You just got that, you just got that inner, you know, but you ever been there where you're like, yeah, we all, <laughs> but I believe we're going to get it back this morning. Look what he said. He said, why are you disquieted? Go back to the scripture, my dear friend. He said, why, he said, why are you cast down, oh my soul? Why are you disquieted? What? He's talking to himself. How many of you, you got to talk yourself back into faith? Yes. <laughs> and he goes on to say, hope thou in God. Hope in God. Hope thou in God. Let me give you that word here. Um, uh, Jeremy, one second, buddy. It's a slide number 16 for the word. This is the Hebrew word for hope. I want you to just see it before he, he said, he said, what you got to do is hope in God. It's interesting that the Hebrew word for hope is a little different. It's, it's kind of cool. I like it. It still, you know, gives you that strong belief. This is what hope means, right? That something's going to happen in the future. But it's, it's like a cord. It's used for binding or attaching, waiting for something. 
That's what hope is. That's what XP. In other words, he said, he said, don't you? He said, why are you broken? Why are you reduced? Why you got all this noise going? He said, hope thou in God. Stay attached to God. Keep your faith cord out there and say, oh, I'm not letting go. I'm laying hold to eternal life. Yeah. That's what hope is. You're, you're not letting go of your future. You're, you're staying attached to it. You're not letting your dreams just fly. You just know that you are strong. You're blessed. You're the healed of the Lord. And that God's got the very, very best for you and me. He said, hey, 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 why are you broken, man? Why are you cast down? He said, why? He goes, stay, hope in God. Stay attached to God. Hope in God. Look at that. Look at that scripture. Uh, look at the slide, my dear friend. Uh, Jimmy, go, to, go back to the scripture. Do the New Living Translation. How many getting stirred up this morning? I got a lot more to share. So you come next week. Maybe I'll do a Wednesday. Who knows? I mean, <laughs> it's all, I don't know what. You know, I told my wife, I said, my sermons are like, like, a, like the lottery balls. You ever see like those things where they got the lottery balls there? There's like a bunch of balls there. And like one will pop out and another will pop out. <laughs> and I tell, my, I tell my dear wife, I say, honey, what I do is I literally study everything that God puts in my heart. I just study it. And then I, then I make the illusion of trying to put it in some sort of format. I do. And I'll ask my wife, I go, honey, what do you think? Uh, what makes more sense to you? And she's more, she sees things differently. And I, I just want to, she'll go, well, this, this, this. And I go, you know, I'm probably not going to do that, you know. And I said, honey, my sermons are almost like a, like, like a lottery thing. Even this morning, I told her, I said, uh, I go, I, wait a minute, the Lord remind me, one more thing I got to write down. And I went to the computer and I started looking it up and I said, and he said, the Lord spoke to you. I said, I go, but honey, it's like a lottery. I go, I don't know if this is going to be the lucky ball or not. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know. I, 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 I don't have a, you know, anyways, you've heard that story before, but it's the truth. He says, why am I discouraged? Why so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. Look at uh, slide number 26. This is what you got to do. You got to do. If you're sitting here today and you're like, Pastor, I lost hope because this didn't happen. What you need to do is just go, I hope. And we'll get next week if the Lord leads us. Hope in the word. What does God's word say? Just even if you don't know the whole Bible, just rest in the word shalom. Lord, I just thank you, Lord. I thought I knew what was best for me, but Lord, I'm going to go in shalom. Whatever needs to be added to me, whatever needs to be subtracted, Lord, whatever needs to be a hello or a goodbye, Lord, I'm open to your wisdom. I rest. I go in shalom. And you can rejoice in that word. God, you got my back. You got my front. You got my side. You're my sword, sword and shield. Lord, you know what's best. I rejoice in you. Why, I ask myself, are you so depressed? Why are you so sad, upset inside? Again, these words, crushed, Bible based and troubled. Good news translation. Why am I so sad? Why am I so troubled? It's an act of your will. I will put my hope in God. And once again, I will praise him, my Savior and my God. That's an act. You can do that today. We're going to sing a song right now. I hope you got a song. <laughs> We're going to sing something, man. I'm telling you, it's going to be good. <laughs> so, Cassie, you got to move now. And uh, I maybe need Jeremy. And Jerry, you might have to help him out over there, sister. Thank you, dear Jerry. How many love Jerry, huh? We give her a day off and we still say, you're online, you're online. All right. Jerry, put that one scripture back up again. Jerry, put that one scripture back up again. That slide, I'm sorry. Slide 26, let him see. I just want you to see. I'm sorry. This is, we want to help, we want to encourage you here. We want to encourage you. He said, why are you so sad? Good news, translator. Why am I so troubled? I will put my hope in God. And once again, I will praise him, my Savior and my God. This is what we got to do. Because you might be sitting there and say, Pastor, I got no feelings. I, I got no feeling. I don't see anything. I don't feel nothing. Maybe you've been in that cycle like Hannah. You're just rotating year after year. You're like, ah, oh, oh, this is so sad. What you got to do, I don't got a specific word for you. It's, a, it's sometimes God's words are generic and you just got to receive it. Shalom. Okay, Lord, I, I, I believe you got the best for me. And Lord, I'm going to praise you. I will hope in you, God. And I'm not going to let the devil rob me of my hope for my future. I'm not going to try to figure out what it is, but I just know God's got the very best for me. 
So we're going to just do like she did. No more sad. So if you can, stand with me to your feet just if you want to. And I want you to put a big smile on your face. Everybody say, by the grace of God, I receive the shalom of the Lord. I know God's got the very best for me. He's already in my future. Lord, whatever you need to add, whatever you need to subtract, I'm cool with it. I just know you got what's best for me. And I choose to be no more sad, no more depressed, no more frustrated. Lord, I wait on you. Lord, I trust you. Lord, I rejoice in you. I thank you, Lord God, for the hope that I have now. I hope in your word. In Jesus' name.